What's up guys, this episode I wanna talk about the Turbolinks clear cache method, how you can use it to your advantage in your Rails apps that are using Turbolinks. So let's take a look at an example problem here and why you might use this to fix some inconsistencies that you might notice in your app. So this first lesson here actually is marked incomplete. If we click on this episode, we load it up and we go down and click mark is complete. That's going to tell the server that the episode's complete for that user and everything is good. However, when we click the back button, we're going to see that it's still incomplete and that seems a little weird. If we refresh, that is going to show as completed. Now, this is because Turbolinks' front end cache has already loaded this page. We went to the new one, we changed something on the server, and when we click back, it just reloads that previous page. So Turbolinks is not aware that we actually modified this page, technically, server side. And so what we have to do is we have to figure out how to bust the Turbolinks cache in order to update this page when you come back to it. Now without Turbolinks, you would use HTTP headers for caching and you could tell it just that it should always reload this page from the server. That way it always has the most up-to-date information and if you ever come back here, it's not going to be out of date or seem inconsistent. So the thing that we can do is we can modify the way that that complete button works and we can tell it once you have completed this, let's clear out the Turbolinks cache. So let's take a look at this. When I click this button, I hit the create action for a completes controller. And that controller action actually renders a little bit of JavaScript. So it basically updates the button, and if it's inside of a series, it marks the episode as complete, and a, a couple little things like that. So if we actually add a turbolinks.clear cache line to this response, this is to, going to tell Turbolinks that the next page that you load actually make sure that you load it from the server. So if you were to click the back button, it's going to force the browser to reload that from the server instead of using the Turbolinks cache. So let's take a look at what this does. When we go back here, let's refresh. It should be marked as incomplete now. So once this loads, we can see that we're in the same state we were before. If we load the episode, if we go down to mark as complete, we can mark it as complete and we can hit the back button and you'll notice that bar at the top, which was the Turbolinks progress bar, meant that it was loading this from the server again. So instead of just it being instantaneous, loading from the cache, this time it requested it from the server and you can see that in your Rails logs and it's marked complete. So it stays consistent between the requests and your user's always going to see what they would expect rather than seeing that cached version of the page. So this is what you would want to use in your JavaScript responses from the server anytime that you were making a non-get request. So anytime you do a patch or a put or a destroy or, uh, or a delete rather or a post request, all of those are going to change things on the server. So generally you would want to make sure that this is going to refresh. Now this is actually baked in to Rails with the Turbolinks Rails gem. This adds some behavior into the redirect function that will say when you normally do a redirect, we will uh, issue a 302 in the browser if you do an HTML request. But because the Turbolinks uh, gem actually overrides the JavaScript behavior of the 302, it will return these two script lines. So the first one is that it will clear the cache and make sure that if you went back to the index page, it's going to be um, reloaded. And the Turbolinks visit is going to tell it which page to display afterwards. So now when you're using Turbolinks 5 in Rails and you say redirect to wherever, if your request is a JavaScript request, it's automatically going to issue these two commands and you will see those being rendered in the response if you look at that in your browser. So if you were to inspect in the network tab, you would see these two lines show up whenever you do a redirect to that comes from a JS type of request. So I'm using JS type of requests on that complete button here, but I'm issuing my own create.js.erb instead of a redirect because I just wanna update the button color 
and that means that I need to issue the Turbolinks clear cache myself because Rails is not doing that for me since I'm not doing a redirect to. So this is an interesting tip to know because if you are seeing those inconsistencies, they may be pretty annoying to your users once they start to notice that ah, this seems off and I need to refresh my browser or whatever. This is the perfect solution for that so that they don't have to continuously refresh their browser. You can issue that command um, and make sure that the browser will do it for them. So this is a nice addition to that and something important to know as you build more stuff with Turbolinks because this will improve the user experience just that little bit more that makes it feel a lot more intuitive to use.